Welcome back to another episode of Learning to Cook on a Budget with yours truly, Erin Chase from Five Dollar Dinners. And today we are learning how to braise beef. And we're doing it on a budget and it's super delicious. And let me just show you this. Look at this potato. This spoon just cuts right through it. Perfectly tender potatoes, gorgeously cooked beef. I'm gonna break it all down for you in this episode. But before I do, I'm gonna ask Lauren, have you ever braised beef before and why not? Never. It just seemed like there's too many steps. Overwhelming, too many steps, too much work. Well, we already know from Overwhelm, if you ever watched any episodes of the Aaron Chase Show, you know that Overwhelm is either not knowing where to start or not knowing how to order things. And that's exactly what happens with this braised beef, but it's so good, it goes a long way. The leftovers are amazing. So I'm gonna break all the steps down for you here and show you just how to do it here in the next couple of minutes. This is such a wonderful, easy dinner idea. It also could be done as sort of a one dish dinner. We'll get into that later. But first we're gonna start with a beef chuck roast. I like this because it's a little bit of a fattier cut. We can cut it into uniform sizes. You can get beef pre-cut, um, but I find sometimes it's a little too lean for a braised beef. It's also a little, the beef is a little too small. We want a little bit bigger chunk, so that's why we are going to cut this beef roast here. So I'm looking for uniform cuts. They don't have to be exactly perfect. We want them to cook evenly in the end. We're gonna then braise those in the Dutch oven, add a few other ingredients, and then let it finish cooking in the oven. So again, we're looking for even pieces. If you need to trim a little bit, that's fine. The flavor, the fat's gonna add a little bit of flavor. Make sure that you're holding your fingers down. There's a big fat pad there that I'll probably cut off. And then lining your knife with your knuckles, especially when you're cutting a, a chunkier, heavier beef like this. Of course, you wanna use your good sharp knife. Once I have these cut, then I am going to pat these dry, salt and pepper them before we add them to the skillet. Now that the beef is cut, I'm just gonna pat it dry with some paper towels or paper napkins. And we're gonna do this to remove any extra liquid from the surface of the beef. And that will help reduce the amount of steam that is created when we go to brown this beef. We wanna reduce the steam so that it gets this nice, flavorful crust and all of the juices stay sealed in with the beef that then is going to cook with all of the other ingredients. So next I've pre-measured out a little bit of salt and pepper since my hands are nice and dirty and I'm just gonna sprinkle this and kind of toss all this together. Coat these as best as you can. The pepper gives that nice flavor. The salt will help to tenderize everything and then it will be time to transfer these guys into the Dutch oven. We are going to now heat up a tablespoon or two of oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, anything with a higher smoke point. And we're gonna get this screaming hot. So we're gonna let this warm up and then when it reaches that smoke point, you'll actually see the smoke. That's why we have all of this ready to go so that when it does get to that smoke point, we can start transferring in the beef into this screaming hot oil. We'll hear that beautiful sizzle sound. We'll get that nice flavorful crust going on to each of these beef roasts. So I'm gonna do this probably what it looks to be three batches. We want a single layer a little bit of space in between each of the beef chunks. And then once we've browned all sides, we'll transfer them to our holding plate. We'll do the next batch. So I predict three, maybe four batches for this beef roast that we have here. Once all of them are browned, we're going to saute up some onions and garlic, reintroduce the beef with our liquid, and let the braising continue. Just before the oil is gonna smoke, you can almost smell it. It's a little bit of a smoky smell almost. It's almost a sweet smoky smell. So now I know it's just about to be ready. So I'm gonna get a couple of these beef pieces ready to go. So we're gonna let this sit for about 30 seconds before we start turning and browning on all sides. All right, let's start flipping these guys. Oh, look at how gorgeous that is. You know you really love food when you start like 
personifying food. It's a perfect crust right there. Oh my goodness, look at these gorgeous pieces. We want the browned beef bits to stick to the bottom of the pan. Um, it's, a, it's happening a little bit more up here where there was a little less oil. And there will be more as we do the batches. We want that depth of flavor in our, it's called the fond, and we want that. These aren't gonna be cooked all the way through and that is okay. All we're after is this gorgeous brown crust that we're getting and we're gonna go and start the next batch. Our three batches of beef are now browned. They're sitting over here waiting in the wings uh, for their appearance back into our dish, if you will, a little theater. I have the browned bits still here. We're gonna add just a chopped onion and a little bit of garlic. We're gonna saute that for just, oh, let's do a lot of garlic. Um, for just a minute, and I'm actually gonna use my flisk to do this. This is a whisk, but we call it a flisk because you can turn it and it turns into a flat whisk. And this is really fantastic for scraping up that fond that we're going to scrape up here in just a minute. I can also use this just to toss these veggies around. In addition to onion and garlic, also chopped celery or chopped carrots would be another great option for veggies to include here at this point. Oh, smells amazing. So I'm not doing a lot of scraping now. I'm actually gonna do the majority of the scraping when I deglaze and add the liquid in here. That's gonna be the next step. Okay, the aromatics are going, like they're fully going because now I'm about to start crying. I almost started crying when I was chopping up that onion real quick, but now it's really like, it smells amazing. Before this gets too browned, we do want that little brown flavoring. I don't want it to burn. I have ready to go here four cups of beef stock. You could do half beef stock, half cooking wine. If you wanted to add a little bit of red wine, that would be a great addition here as well. This is a bouillon base. Let me just scrape the rest of this bouillon out of here. That will incorporate as it heats up. And I'm also gonna add just a touch of tomato sauce. This is just an eight ounce can of tomato sauce just to add a little depth of flavor. The tomato sauce will also pair really well if you choose to add any red cooking wine or red wine. I'm using the flat version of the flisk to scrape up that bottom part and get those nice flavorful brown bits incorporated into the sauce. And now I'm going to reintroduce the beef that we already browned. If there's any juices on the plate, let those all flow right back into the pot. And we are going to let this come to bubbling and then we're gonna transfer it into the oven. I'm gonna actually put the lid onto my Dutch oven, put this in the oven for probably about 30 minutes at 300 degrees. Okay, now it's time to add some potatoes. I'm gonna add some red potatoes. Gold potatoes is another great option. I like both of these because you don't have to do much with them other than quarter them because the skin is thin enough uh, that it will cook evenly and quickly in with the beef and the juices. When it comes to adding vegetables to a braised beef like this, uh, vegetables like potatoes are gonna take about 30 minutes to cook in that slow oven. So if you're adding something like peas or spinach or even broccoli, I don't know that I'm gonna broccoli, well, but it might be okay. You're gonna add that right as you take it out of the oven after the beef is nice and slow cooked in the Dutch oven in the oven. So just be mindful of when you're adding your vegetables depending on how long those vegetables need to cook. A sweet potato, a potato, is going to take a little longer so I would give it about 30 minutes in the oven any of those other you know smaller faster to cook vegetables you can add those after you've taken out of the oven let the the heat of the liquid cook those through our braised beef and potatoes are now ready I just pulled them out of the oven make sure that you're using these pinch mitts yes we have these available in our store or any other heavy hot pad because this entire dish one it's heavy two the pot is hot so please be careful also the lid will be hot as well because we had it in the oven with the lid on so just be mindful of that so using my trusty silicone ladle i love this guy because it can just really get into the corners of our dish 
and I'm going to transfer this gorgeous braised beef potatoes with a little bit of sauce into my bowl and you can of course season to salt and pepper to taste you've got that really nice thin red skinned potato a gold potato as well is going to look just perfect it's easy you can just eat that skin you don't even have to peel it that's what i love about these potatoes so if you were going to add anything to the top of this maybe a little sprinkling of grated parmesan cheese it doesn't need anything but if you wanted to top it off with something i think that would be a perfect complement to this dish we're learning to cook on a budget here, which is why we are using the beef chuck roast and we're cutting it up. That's the most affordable beef roast option, at least at the moment, it generally is. Um, and so we're, that's why we're cutting it up and we are you know, braising it and then slow cooking it in the oven. Of course, adding the potatoes in there helps make this a hearty meat and potatoes meal that's gonna be stretched a long way. Also, this makes for fabulous leftovers as the flavors continue to deepen with the potatoes and the meat in the fridge before you go enjoy it for leftovers. If you learned something new or you have learned something new from any of our videos in the Learn to Cook on a Budget series, I would like to invite you to subscribe subscribe. We release new videos in the series every Wednesday at noon at Central Times. So when you subscribe, you'll get a little notification and an email letting you know that we have a new episode available for you.